God started the formation of the world with a word. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light. God also said that as his children, if we got faith the size of a mustard seed, we can speak to mountains in our life and cause these mountains to move. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Amen. 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 For the audience out there, before you have some type of conniption fit, I'm dressed down. It's the fifth Sunday. Amen. 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 And I'm not just up here in my old clothes just doing something. Amen. I come to you today from the Anderson Street Community Church of Christ to speak to you on something the Spirit moved me to speak to you about today. As I've told members of the church already, that the lesson that we had in our auto service, we won't, we won't be talking on it today. I, I just feel, I feel the need, and the Spirit has led me to talk on this subject. How much longer? Yeah. How much longer? For the audience, thanks you again for joining us. So happy that you're able to take out of your busy Sunday, especially on a holiday weekend, to spend some time with this old country preacher. I appreciate it, and I hope and pray that you continue to do so. Um, you're probably going to see this preacher preach and teach and talk today in a manner that's a little different because what I'm about to talk about touches me. It touches me deeply because it's a part of who I am. What I believe that I've been put here on this earth to do and to protect. And that is our children. Amen. How much longer been a question that hunt Christians for as long as I can remember? Uh, the 19 children killed at the Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas are both typical and extraordinary in that it has happened before. And these could very well have been our children. Amen. We've seen scenes like this play out year after year. Mm -hmm. Just last Thursday, I was listening on, on, on the news and stood up in White Station High School in Memphis. Caught on campus with a gun. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it could happen right here in Mars. It could happen in Pumi County. It could happen where your child goes to school. I let's take today Jesus asked the father of the boy who was brought to them with the unclean spirit. How long has it been with him? Or how long has it been happening? Or I want to take that question and I want to ask, how much longer? We gotta put up with stuff like this in school. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, what does that got to do with the Bible? He needs to teach the Bible. Turn your Facebook or whatever you got watching away from me. <laughs> That's what you want to hear. I'm going to bring you some Bible. Amen. But I'm going to bring you some common sense. Amen. Amen. It's day two. We ask the question all the time. How much now? What are we going to do about it? And then we go to the poll and we put folks in the office. They got about as much sense as a cucumber. Mm. And we act like we shot the day and got no sense. They ain't no sense with that running ball. Amen. Amen. Truth. Yes. How long has it been, the Lord asked? This evil, murder, killing of innocent people, children in school. How much longer will this be with us? Mm. Well, see, I got a question. I got an answer for you. It's straight out the Bible. Some of us are not going to want to hear it because it's something that I'm sick and tired. Praying, all you do is tell me to pray. I'm sick and tired of praying. Maybe you ain't praying right, or maybe you're praying to the wrong God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. My Bible told me what to do. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to put what I hold dear to me, my children. Hand some man. Right. He ain't got no more sense than I got. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some days my wife tell me when I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you think they don't have crazy days? Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 9, Jesus, Peter, James, and John had just come down from the mountain. Mm -hmm. They saw the other disciples arguing among themselves and it was described, the Jews described. 
the, the apostles had been able to dismiss demons and folk before, but they couldn't dismiss the demon in this boy. And Jesus got tired. How long well, do you think I'm going to be with you? Well, I give you what you need and you keep come asking me. Well, you keep looking for me to come rescue you. Well, what did Jesus tell them they need? I'm glad you asked. Yeah, Question is, how much longer will things like this happen? The answer is, until we increase our faith and pray more often. Amen. 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 D-E. Ain't no big old boom, baby, wait a minute. Point number one, point number two. No! Amen. One point! Amen. Increase your faith. Well. And pray more often. Amen. People don't even pray before they eat no more. Oh, I forgot, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Amen. You don't even have time to take out time to get ready to come before the God that you say is your God. Mm -hmm. He's going to come before him anyway. People watch up before they go to the table. Mm -hmm. But you can't get yourself ready to come before God in prayer. Mm -hmm. well. hmm. Jesus said they couldn't do it because of their lack of faith mm -hmm. and their neglected prayer life. So how much longer will things like this happen until we increase our faith? Amen. We need to re replace your faith, your fear with faith. Amen. Amen. See, I, I'm sick and tired of people playing on people's fear. Mm -hmm. sure. You got everybody around, they want to, with the incident that happened out there, the teachers need to buy a gun. Mm -hmm. They need to put people on the, out there on the school lot with guns. Mm -hmm. They need to let these, these officers out here have guns with these hollow point bullets just like they got. Mm. And the NRA sitting back going, ha, 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 more sales for us. Mm. Yep. Right. There are some people swore than ice melting in the wintertime outside. Mm. <laughs> you got a fire, you want to pour gasoline on it. Mm. Forget the fact that you've already given the teacher 59 million jobs to already do. Amen. Amen. Now you want to make a, a security slash police officer on campus. Well. My children deserve more than they're from you as an elected official. Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. They deserve more than they're from you as a Christian. Amen. Amen. We need to replace this fear we have with prayer. Yes, sir. All this talk, all they do is talk. They paid $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year to talk. What we need to do, <laughs> what other folks ain't doing, is this is why things ain't getting done. You are the reason. Mm. Amen. When you do nothing, nothing gets done. Amen, that's true. How you gonna blame nothing getting done on somebody that's trying to do something and you're not doing nothing? Mm. Amen. Well. So how much faith should we have and expect for stuff like this to no longer exist? I'm glad you asked. Well, we all know that God accepts us just where we are. Uh -huh. right. Christ has already told us, you don't even have to have but a little faith. Side of a mustard seed. Matthew 17, 20. Have a faith side of a mustard seed. Nothing you ask will be impossible. Yeah. Are you praying that our children are safe when they go to school? Mm -hmm. Where's your mustard seed worth faith? Mm -hmm. You spend all your energy trying to mind blow somebody who you elected to be in the office to do the thing you want them to do. Instead of going to the source they can do somebody in the first place. God the... Amen. Amen. So first thing first. Where's the faith needed? See, you don't... You don't ask a seemingly impossible from a God you hardly know. Mm. Mm. If you ain't praying to him on a regular basis, how do you know him? That's right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know him, if you don't know him, why are you asking him for such great things to be happening uh -oh. in your life? Uh -oh. Pray to the God that you give your time to. If you don't have a good prayer life, you can't really say you know God. Amen. Why are you asking for greatness? You don't even know him. I know you don't hardly know me. I just might be sending a letter to the president. <laughs> I know you barely know me. You probably don't know me at all. 
But I need a couple million dollars. <laughs> Can you do something with some branches of your government? You see to it that I get a couple of million dollars in my bank account. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No. P.S. Hardly known. Hardly known. Can you see him grant that to me? Hmm. But we ask, the, we ask God for stuff like that all the time. God, I know I ain't been on my knees in a long time. But the God. Uh, mm -hmm. For real faith in God to be genuine, we must accept God as he reveals himself to us in the Bible. Amen. Not as how we would like him to be. Amen. Can't accept the quality of God that we prefer in our lives and reject the other ones. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. The one that said we had to pray regular. Mm -hmm. well, well, the Lord knows my heart because I fell asleep tonight. <laughs> and I got to pray. The Lord knows my heart. Ooh, I ate my whole meal and didn't even pray. The Lord knows my heart. <laughs> when you going to put him first? That's right. If you know you're going to be that hungry when you put your plate down, pray while you're cooking. <laughs> ooh, Lord, you smell. Ooh, you smell them green. Lord, thank you for them greens. <laughs> You know you like green when soon they hit the plate. I don't need no, I don't even need no fork. <laughs> Give me a little of that cornbread. You better pray. Amen. Amen. If we don't accept God as he is, we put a lot of faith in a false God mm -hmm. yes, of our own making. Mm -hmm. We limit God in our life and then expect him to do great things for a person who's supposed to be doing great things for him. Amen. See, I, Y'all think I'm being arrogant or cocky or something when I say anything I ask my God for he's going to give it me. Amen. I've told y'all it over and over and over because you know why? Every day I'm living my life too. Up here. Mm -hmm. How I treat people. Mm -hmm. And when I don't treat them right and it's get, get, getting on to me, I correct it quicker. Mm -hmm. Because I know I got something I want to ask God and I ain't looking for him to tell me no. Amen. Who wants their daddy to tell him no? Amen. Amen. My daddy tell me, clean your room. I'm going to do this for you. And I go in there and throw everything under the bed. <laughs> Let down them little hem things on my bed. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He come back up in there and go, whoop. This room is really cleaned around. 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 But now raise that shade under your bed. And then you get mad at him. You ain't going to look under there, daddy. What's <laughs> wrong <laughs> with you? Yes, I'm he said, clean your room. He just said, make it look clean. But Dad, you say I can go if I clean my room. You haven't cleaned your room. Amen. Amen. In Mark chapter 6, verses 7 through 13, Jesus told his disciples that they lacked faith to do what seemed impossible for them to do. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Stop right there. You can't ask God. That incredible God that you call Jehovah in your life, you can't expect him to do things for stuff like what happened to you all in Texas. If he ain't first in your life. Amen. Amen. If you ain't serving him, you might as well ask somebody you serve. Mm -hmm. In most cases, it's our job. Mm -hmm. Tam. For real, 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 real faith in God. Yes, sir. Time, pray, talk to God on a regular basis. Amen. Amen. As a kid, I used to laugh at old folk. My grandma used to pray in Brookville with us one time. My grandma used to pray so long, you better not be hungry when she started praying. <laughs> <laughs> when she finished praying, you might want to get your stuff to go. You know what? I don't know about even going to see how I tell to this chicken. Because she was a praying person. Amen. She didn't care who Amen. heard her pray. And I hear you all, and I tell you all sometimes, let your children hear you pray. Amen. So they know that you're praying for you, and they can learn how to pray. Amen. Pray ain't just something that come. Amen. Then and only then, with well, this impossible act, this unnecessary killing in our country and in the world cease. Mm -hmm. Increase our faith. And increase our prayer. Talk to God. Amen. Bible says, what are we asking his name? I'm asking that. Amen. The question is, are we in his name? Mm. Have we examined ourselves, cleansed ourselves from every evil known act and thought? Stop right there. Mm. You can't pray a 
about the kids and the parents and the devastation that was left there in Uvalde, Texas at the same time, find blame for the people who put in charge of the thing. Mm. Okay. You cannot find fault in the police officers. They, they did something wrong. You can't be blaming them as a Christian who's asking the Lord to bless the families. Mm. Amen. You're judging at the same time praying for people. It's not going to get up. Mm. Mm. So what if they did whatever they did? Who, what are you praying? Why are you before the Lord? Mm -hmm. right. He don't do judgments. Mm. Amen. Pray for the children and the family and leave the rest of the mess alone. Amen. 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 We must approach him like he, he's the God that he is. The only God capable of doing the impossible is God. So what are you praying for? How much longer? People say, how much longer do we? Ah. The answer to that question is long enough. But what is long enough? I'm glad you asked. Long enough is not a day or two. Long enough is not even a year or a decade. Long enough is not limited by time. Long enough means until you get the results you want. Long enough means as long as it takes. You gotta hang in there as Christians. If we're not praying for goodness, for goodness sake, who is? My prayer to God is and always be that we have enough faith, that we pray enough to secure ourselves a safe and loving Christian life for ourselves and for our families. Amen. Amen. That's my prayer. Amen. I don't want anybody to have to go through what those people went through. My baby go to school today, don't come home this evening. Mm -hmm. Faith to believe what no one else could believe takes getting to know someone well. We got to get to know God well. Mm -hmm. I want to end this with a story. And at the end, I'm going to give you the moral, this whole lesson that I brought to you. I'm glad that the Spirit did. Now, I was having some thoughts about bringing this lesson before you, but now I feel good about having brought it to you because I've heard myself speaking. I didn't know what he wanted me to say, but I'm going to say what he said to say. This story is entitled, The Price of a Miracle. An 11-year-old named Tess overheard her mom and dad talking about her younger brother. All she could make out is that her brother was very sick and he needed surgery, but dad was not able to pay for it. She heard her dad say it would take a miracle. Little Tess went to her room, broke open her piggy bank, secured all her little money and slipped out the back door to the pharmacy down the street. She waited patiently for someone to notice her, but no one did. Finally, she took a coin from her bag, and began banging it on the glass table. Pharmacist angrily looks at her and asks, what is it that you want? Before she could answer, the pharmacist continued, can't you see? I'm talking to my brother, who I have not seen in a long time. Tess replied, well, I want to talk to you about my brother. He's really sick. I want to buy a miracle. The pharmacist said, I beg your pardon? And she continued, his name is Andy. He has something bad growing inside his head. My dad say it would take a miracle to save him. So how much for a miracle? The pharmacist's brother, who was standing there all this time, stooped down and asked, what kind of miracle does your brother need? Tess replied, I don't know. All I know is that he is very sick, and my mama say he needs an operation, but my dad can't pay for it. So I want to use my money. How much money do you have? I have one dollar and eleven cents, Tess replied. It's all that I have, but I can get more. The man smiled and replied. What a, co what a coincidence. A dollar and eleven cents is exactly the price of a miracle for a little boy. He took her money in one hand and held her, hand, her, her other hand and said, Now take me to your mom and dad. I want to see them and see if I have the kind of miracle you need. The, the man's brother, the pharmacist, was named Dr. Carlton Armstrong. Look him up sometime. He was a surgeon specializing in neurosurgery. Neuro 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 Little Andy surgery complete was completed and he got better and, and at the cost of the family, it cost the family nothing. Later on, Tess heard mom asking dad, how much do you think that surgery costs? 
test knew exactly how much. One dollar and eleven cents. The moral of the story is your faith, your love, and your truth is a hundred times more powerful than doubt and fear. Amen. Amen. Have faith in yourself. Be kind-hearted, and God will do the rest. Yes, he will. Amen. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 I want to thank you all for joining us this morning. I apologize that the lesson may have changed. And I may have announced on last law that for you all out there that we'll be talking about something different. But if you don't know anything about this country preacher, I'm going to do what the Spirit asked me to do. Amen. He asked me to speak on this today, and I hope that it's been beneficial to someone. I know it has been to me. Yes, sir. I want to thank you all out there for joining us today. Join us again next Sunday at 11 o'clock while we try to expound on another portion of God's true and divine word. And until then, be good to yourself and be good to each other. Amen. Amen.